You may have seen this, it's the Humane AI Pen, a really interesting device that is aiming to replace the smartphone. But can they really pull this off? In case you don't know or haven't understood the point of this device, the Humane AI Pen is fundamentally a wearable Android smartphone without a display that is mainly controlled by speaking with an AI, whose underlying model is probably ChatGPT. Though it will link to other AIs or services when it makes sense, it's not just a language model. Despite lacking a screen, when needed, it can project visual information on the user user's palm with a projector. Those UI elements can also allow for direct interaction using a bunch of gestures, but the idea is that the device should really do as much as possible in the background by itself, allowing you to focus on the real world essentially. And to me, it's a really fascinating idea. It's the first true attempt at creating what has been referred to as ambient compute, and it's one of the first true attempts, plural, at imagining what is the next big thing, something the industry is in desperate need of. The reception has been, let's say, divided. Many people believe that this is the coolest thing ever. Many others believe that it's one of the dumbest ideas imagined. To try and understand whether this product has the potential to become the new dominant form factor, when it comes to at least mobile computing, we have to analyze the pros and the cons relative to our current devices. Believe it or not, even if many people don't realize it yet, this device does have at least one pretty big advantage over almost every other device form factor out there, which is already pretty game-changing right now, and it'll only become more important as the years go by. One of the main challenges with AI right now is making it feel like a natural extension of your brain as much as possible instead of something separate. And because of how it's designed, this device enables a new way Way to use it with fundamentally less friction. To make any sort of query, you simply have to long press on the touchpad, and the device will be able to listen to what you say and see what you see. Then, by using a combination of local or internet data, depending on the task, it'll give you an answer. I've seen many people say that this is in no way different from using Siri or Google Assistant on a phone by long pressing a button, but I heavily disagree on this. If you don't already have the phone in your hand, well, first of all, you have to reach in your pocket to pick it up. You have to unlock it, and only then you can use the assistant. Here you don't have to pick up or unlock anything, the gesture required by the AI pin is just one quick step, and it's always available. Too many people vastly underestimate the effect of reducing friction in user experience. One could make a counter-argument. Yes, in this case the friction is reduced if you consider the phone in the user's pocket as the starting point of the user flow, however, even while using those devices, people rarely, if ever, go out of their way to ask the assistant for stuff. Why is that? What if people just don't like conversational interfaces? This may sound like a reasonable argument that reflects the reality of how people want to use technology. Maybe conversational UIs are, and will always be, just bad. But actually, people do like them. Think of all those times at events, in class or wherever, where, I don't know, either you, one of your friends, even a complete stranger asked you something about it, about the event, like, when does this start, or where is that? Even in situations where you all have a phone and internet, which is pretty much always, even if the event itself has an official website with all the info you could possibly want, it remains more natural and convenient to ask. If what I just said sounded incredibly obvious and unnecessary, that's kind of the point. I've seen too many people suggest that for some reason natural language for computers, especially if you have to speak, is this fundamentally horrible idea. And like, bruh, this is not some weird and exotic kind of interaction that nobody would ever use. The same can be said about delegating tasks, the other half of this device value proposition. It's actually considered a luxury most of the time. Contrary to what many believe, in practice, graphical user interfaces are not always the better option. The problem with conversational UIs is not that they require you to speak. How could it be after all? The problem is that the ones we are used to kinda suck. Usually, when they have to pick something up from the web, they fail to understand what you actually want. And even when they don't, they pretty much just give you the link and maybe, if you're lucky, they can answer to a couple of easy generic follow-up questions. Like, if the conversation was about a specific monument, you can ask, when was it built? Just really basic stuff. Even for stuff that is not on the web, that is on device, like your conversations, mails, or notifications, the best they can really do 
is read them word by word. Of course, reading them manually ends up being more efficient. Then. There is also the obvious problem of voice being inherently linear. If there is no intelligent interface between you and the audio, you kind of have to listen from start to finish. Unlike with written text, there's really no way to skim around, jump backwards and forwards, and see the parts you haven't really understood the first time, and skip the ones you already have. It doesn't really allow for that if there is nothing else to it. Why is this not a problem when talking to people? Because the flow of the conversation can be controlled. You can ask to repeat a specific part, to explain it better, or to add more context. This is the intelligent interface I was talking about before. It's the people themselves. All stuff that despite everyone's best efforts has never really worked on assistance. They don't really have a conversational UI. They only sort of have the most basic elements of it. But it's not enough. It's never been. I guess to prove my point now, I'd have to find an assistant that does everything I'm saying. If people end up using it way more than all the others, it could mean that I'm on the right track. Oh wait, we do have one. It's ChatGPT. It does exactly what I'm saying would be the solution to the issue at hand, and would you look at that, people are actually using it. When you have a conversational UI for humans that follows the rules of human conversation, it actually works. Unbelievable, right? To recap, if it is true that in some situations we prefer asking to other people for information or to do something, even if we have our phone or any other device with a graphical user interface with us, it must mean that this interaction is sometimes perceived as better, more convenient. If people mostly don't like using current assistance, even for those situations, the problem is not with the idea in general, but how they were implemented. Thus, it can be fixed, and I think Humane did it. Because of its design, and the fact that, as a bridge with the local data or what is on the web, it uses an actual language model as the engine for conversation, if there is one device that has a chance at making conversational UI work, it's this one. What it does cannot be replicated by the ChatGPT app on your phone, because it can't really access what is on device, your personal context. And by being a separate app instead of a gesture, it will always have more friction. There's stuff that will work better on the AI pin than on any other device. However, there's also a lot that this device simply can't do. If I wanted to nitpick, I could. There's a bunch of little details that may end up being very annoying in the first version of this device. Like the fact that, as of now, you have to use a separate number on it. I understand that this is a problem, but it's also very easy for me to think of how they could solve it. The problems I want to discuss are those I don't see an obvious solution to. To begin, the AI pin by design is hostile to visual media. The projector is only there to show you visual information, and only when strictly needed. By its very monochromatic nature, plus the fact that it must be projected onto your wrinkled and uneven hand, it becomes obvious very quickly how this device will simply not support a bunch of use cases. If their vision is that it should be a phone replacement, then I have no idea how would they achieve it, at least in this device current form. To think that people would be okay with completely losing access to all forms of visual media while on the go, which by the way doesn't just mean hours of TikTok doom scrolling, it also means the photos sent by your contacts, I find it hard to believe. This is mainly a problem if you're meant to use it as a complete replacement to your phone, however. Let's assume it's just an accessory. First of all, if it ends up being successful, how do they deal with the inevitable competition? Say, if Apple makes its own version of this idea, it's obviously going to be much better integrated with the rest of their ecosystem. It's going to have so much more useful user data. For people who only use Apple products for literally everything they do, an Apple pin of sorts would be able to know them, their health, and all their projects Perfect. How can Humane compete with that? They could remain competitive in the Android market, because if it takes Apple, let's say, four to five years to come up with a competitor, it's likely that for the others it would take even longer, and in the worst case scenario Humane would still have ways to be the better option. But then there is the other problem. This could work in a smartphone-centric world. What if that stops being the case? The obvious idea, smart glasses, seems to be everyone else's bet, the thing everyone is trying to figure out right now. Let's say that smart glasses, or truly any kind of device with the same or higher potential, for any reason end up becoming the actual phone replacement. What can the AI pin do that smart glasses wouldn't be able to do as well? Glasses are still wearables. All the advantages I said the AI pin has relative to phones, 
don't work against glasses. If you have a device that can do everything the AI pin is capable of and more, meaning that it doesn't get rid of visual media, how do they win? Why should you have both if one can replicate and surpass the other's functionality? Keep one thing in mind, even if you consider Humane's approach to user experience fundamentally better because it's less addictive, because it lets you stay more in the moment, that's not because it doesn't have a screen. The great intuition they've had when designing this device is that with its UX that doesn't really have an hierarchy that requires you to explicitly say a command of the exact thing you want to do in that moment, well, this different approach at user experience may lead to more intentionality. By lacking a standard concept of navigation, things like the feed or the for you page, essentially those endless streams of content that is picked by an algorithm, which are really the main culprits for wasting time on social media, are much more complex to implement, and you have way less occasions to lose yourself in the content. It increases the friction this time between you and mindlessly wasting hours on apps for no reason. It's not the first time that this idea has been thrown around, I understand why it could work, but again, it doesn't require you to get rid of a screen entirely, it's purely about design. Even if everyone ends up liking the AI pin's user experience so much, they will refuse to use anything else from now on. Phones cannot, but glasses, and maybe not only them, can replicate every aspect of it. The only thing about the pin that glasses wouldn't be able to do is show content to the outside world, at least to people who are not wearing the same kinds of glasses. That is the practical advantage of having a projector. Is it enough? I have been thinking about this exact problem since before it was released, and I'm still not sure whether there is a way. Maybe if people truly hate the concept of wearing glasses all day, despite what they'll be capable of, then the status quo of mobile computing is preserved and we return to the scenario from before. So phone as the main thing, AI pin as the accessory. For now, it seems Humane is betting on this exact scenario. I guess we'll have to wait and see for that, but I'm not sure. And that's kinda sad. I have been somewhat critical of this device, but I do have an insane respect for it. You mean it's one of those incredible things that almost never happen, you know? They have this vision that is truly bold, and they are willing to risk everything to see if it works. It is so rare to see such wild experimentation, even in concepts from people who have nothing to lose. As someone who loves technology and design, and especially considering the current, mostly stale state of the market with just a couple of exceptions, this stuff is incredible to me. I I wish more people tried unconventional ideas like this, and it's kinda depressing to see so many self-proclaimed tech enthusiasts not getting it. Not getting why this, regardless of whether it ends up being a massive success or a colossal failure, is still so important. Despite everything, my excitement is still there, and as I said, I absolutely want to try it. I see how it could be pretty useful in a bunch of situations. I may be a little bit biased here, since I have been closely following this story for the past year. Now that I think about it, it's possible that for some of you, my videos were how you first discovered this whole thing in the first place. That's how relatively early I was. No one can already say how this will end, but I do wish them all the best, because they honestly deserve this is the stuff that actually matters. Not somewhat better cameras, not higher refresh rates, and definitely not folding displays. It really is all about the user experience. And if you want to see how I think our experience with technology will evolve in the future, check this video out. I think you may find it interesting. Thank you for watching. Ciao.